We are recording. We are welcome. Welcome everyone. Make sure I see the re yeah. Make sure I've seen the recording. So I'm like, all right, we're good. Yeah. All right. Hopefully my internet will bandwidth will get back together here. So just a reminder of our uh, you know, our mission statement here, really looking at um, making sure that we increase our awareness uh, and promote equitable access and improve outcomes for all special populations and really looking at our gifted and talented uh, world. So the presenters for this conference was myself, Dr. Mary Austin and Dr. Kel, uh, Todd Kettler. And I'm not sure if Todd is on, Meredith may be on with me today. Uh, but really, we just kind of gave a high-level introduction of the Commissioner's Advisory Council, our priority areas for 2022, and then I had a few updates and really wanted to get into the updates. So I'm kind of going to skip to that section. I'm going to skip to the Commissioner's Advisory Council, uh, kind of give you what their goals are and what their purpose is. So really, the Commissioner's Advisory Council is really organized to uh, advise TEA, which is myself and the commissioner and the work that we do here on policy and practice related to gifted and talented education and advanced academics. And so uh, really looking at how do we support you in the, uh, in the field with part of the rule, the policies, but making sure that you have the, the material that you need to put into practice all of the rules, the, uh, the policies that have been provided. So going from there. And so these are the members of our Commissioner's Advisory Council. As you see, we got a few vacancies. So we have a secondary teacher, uh, elementary principal, and a secondary principal that are vacant and that we're looking to uh, also fill into those positions. And we're really working on moving a, a few, as a few people are moving on, transitioning in their terms with the CAC, because it is a, uh, three-year term up to six, because you can do two terms. Uh, Dr. T Todd Kettler is uh, moving from his higher education position to the community position and replacing Ann Week there, who has uh, expired her six years of service. Uh, as we know, we have a new TAG uh, president, uh, Christina Dearman, and so Debbie Smith has uh, phased off of our uh, council. And so those are some of the moves there in the larger scope of this. And so I got a few recommendations from our conversation from uh, in December. And so waiting on some of those uh, to send in their resumes. But if you are a secondary principal uh, looking to, uh, if you know a secondary principal that is an advocate for gifted and talented education, uh, recommend them. Send us your, uh, you know, send us their name. Uh, I am free to uh, invite them to send us a resume so that we can forward that on to the commissioner for his decision. So if you know some people, got a few vacancies, I got some that are, you know, uh, have already up, sent their stuff in or are working on getting it to us. So the priority areas are really these three areas and we really kind of kept it focused and all of them kind of meld and fold into each other and support each other. So the first one is the equity and access to gifted education. Uh, the second one is measurable outcome, uh, student outcomes associated with gifted ed. And then our third one is achieving accountability standards and gifted and talented education. So when we really look at equity and access, and I'm not gonna read the entire uh, statement to you and we'll be putting these actually, uh, we're considering uh, placing, creating a CAC webpage. So those probably be there and will be linked from our GT webpage. So really looking at the question. So what can, what ways might school districts expand access to gifted and talented services so that the population receiving these services is closely reflective of the district and our campus? All of our uh, priorities are related back to a standard and accountability standard in the state plan. So if you recognize this language, it's coming straight from the state plan, just for, for you know, framed as a question. And so if you are 
and I'm just going to put it out there. If you are a district that's really doing something well, or you think you got a process that's really going well in your area on looking at that population and how you're getting to that reflective of your campus or district, share it with us. Um, we're really looking at maybe possibly approaching this in a couple of ways. Uh, we always have this venue here of our DT Tuesdays talking specifically about this and sharing resources. And that was one of my goals for this year. But we're also looking at possible focus groups, really looking at how can we build out the tools and instruments um, in another platform, another venue, so that, that as we move forward as a state, we're really looking at how can we support everyone across the state. Um, as you know, we do not want to be in the situation of uh, other states around the nation that are really fighting hard for their programs where they're eliminating their programs. And so we're really looking at how can we make sure that our program and our equity are, and all of our students have access to our gifted ed education. So that takes us to the next point, which is measurable student outcomes associated with gifted ed and really looking at how can we develop and use assessment processes that measure advanced knowledge and skills in the areas served by the, by the gifted and talented education programs or services. So how are you measuring your student growth? How are you measuring your program accountability? How are you looking at what your students are moving forward in? So what are your assessment processes? How do you determine that our, your students who are being served are growing or moving to those next level? And then how do you know that your program is, is successful? Really looking at those different things. What is the grade area that uh, grade level or grade area that's really like, okay, that's a struggle for us in you know, Mockingbird ISD that we need to really look at how can we move, build a better process here? or what do we need to look at on building out these next things? And so what are we looking at and then how are we doing that? And then really looking at, and uh, as we look at these domain specific outcomes. So it's kind of like, how do we help our counterparts also when they're looking at those measurable outcomes for their programs, how does that apply to GT? How does that apply to the services that we're providing? Or are we just a silo and we just like, you know, look at us, but really look, how do we move forward? what our student growth and achievement over time. And then the last one is achieving accountability standards in gifted education. As you know, our GT standards are in our state plan and really looking at how are you meeting or exceeding those goals, those accountability standards. How are you as a district really looking at how we're providing, you know, what are we doing? And then if it's not something that you can figure out for yourself, how can we as an organization, uh, as TEA, help you to get to the next level? How can we help you to meet those standards? What, what processes, what materials, resources, or you know, different scopes? You know, what can we build to build your capacity and build your uh, strengths? And so before I go on, because I see her on, and I'm gonna put her on the spot, Dr. Mary Austin, would you like to uh, say anything else about our Commission of the Advisory Council or any questions or as we're going into questions, because I think we're there. Good, goodness, I was not expecting that, but yes, hello. Um, I, I think, I mean, you hit, the, you hit the goals and the kind of the focus areas, you know, pretty well. You know, really just looking at, you know, you know, equity, the measurable outcomes, and then kind of meeting those accountability areas. But, um, you know, since, you know, I am the, the chair this year, or sorry, in the, just the past few weeks for the CAC. So, um, you know, concerns, questions that anyone has, you know, you're welcome to send them, shoot, shoot them to me, to, um, to Monica, and we can try and address those and clear some things up. So, is there anything else you want me to say? Am I good? You're good. You're good. Thank you. Appreciate it. So, before I go on, are there any questions uh, out there? Uh, that we may can answer before uh, before actually getting into the TA updates. I'm gonna actually give uh, Paulina Van Eden Hill uh, opportunity to give any uh, TAG updates. So there's no questions. The chat looks quiet today. So Paulina, I know I saw her 
join us. Yes, welcome. Hi. Hi, everybody. Great to see you. Hope you all had a wonderful break. I know this isn't the school year or semester we hope to walk into, but we sure enjoyed seeing you in December at Gift Ed. Um, I'm Paulina Van Eden Hill, the Executive Director of the Texas Association for the Gifted and Talented. Um, and uh, TAGT is your member, member association, your professional association, and we provide um, all kinds of opportunities to build community, um, receive professional learning, um, and connect with each other on um, issues and challenges that you all face. Um, if you are a new coordinator, um, and we haven't met yet, or a specialist, or whatever, uh, new to your role in GT, um, DM me um, so that we can connect. I want to make sure that you're aware of what um, what our organization does and um, how to become a member and get connected to um, the real brilliance that we have on this call and throughout the state when it comes to leadership and um, gifted and talented education. Uh, we have a couple of big things coming up. The spring is really focused on you all as leaders and coordinators of um, GT programs. As you hopefully have heard, we opened registration for our leadership conference, uh, which is aimed at you, uh, coordinators and specialists, people in the leadership roles, making decisions um, or leading programs, um, even at the campus uh, level or multiple campuses. We've got a lot of great um, kind of specialist content. We opened registration for that last week. The dates are March 27th through the 29th in Georgetown. And um, I can tell you, we opened registration and we had like so many people register right away. It was really great to see um, this. This event was the first event we canceled and moved online in 2020, about two weeks before that. So we are real pumped to get back in um, to this really intimate small group um, uh, uh, conference uh, in Georgetown, Texas. Um, we're adjusting the schedule a little bit this year. So we'll have some Sunday afternoon um, right before we usually kick off with like an opening reception as you pick up your badge on Sunday. Right before that, we'll have some meetups. So we'll have a meetup for like new coordinators um, who are kind of trying to get their um, their feet under them. We'll have a meetup if you were participating in the new coordinator boot camp last August, which my, by now you probably don't feel like a new coordinator. So we want to make sure you have an opportunity to see each other and meet each other in person, um, and a couple of different um, opportunities like that. So if you plan on uh, attending, try to. Um, jump in uh, and, and plan on being there around, let's, let's say three on Sunday. And then you'll be out um, depending on uh, whether you do uh, register for the summit, which is focusing on leveraging your GT program. Um, that will go through, I think about three o'clock on Tuesday. So we'll be in Georgetown. Thanks for posting those links and I'll make sure um, that you guys get links to everything uh, once I'm done. We're, we're focused on, um, okay, so the schedule. So we're starting on Saturday, Sunday a little bit earlier than normal. And then uh, if optional, and then um, on Monday, we're going to do some breakouts and a keynote in the morning. And then we're going to do deep dive sessions in the afternoon. So you'll pick a workshop to attend that'll basically be about three hours with a nice long break in the middle um, to really get deep into the content. We think that um, when we did leadership conference online last year called Leadership Plus, we did the four part series, it was really nice to dive deeply into a topic. And so we want to kind of keep that as we get back together. So look for those. The topics that we're looking for and the call for proposals did get extended one more time. We're looking for a few more sessions, um, creating intentional change. So we know where there's been um, like gobs of change in your world, maybe forced though, right? So we want to make sure that, you know, some of that stuff was probably things that you wanted to do a long time, moving all your assessments online, I'm sure is something that you guys are like, thank goodness, right? Um, but what are some other ways we can really um, uh, create intentional change and keep the, the, the things in place that, that um, you were able to shift? Um, we are talking about uh, new coordinators, like I said, we'll have some special things for you all, uh, because I know there are a lot of folks who are kind of shifting right now, um, leveraging your GT program, and then um, another big focus is building and retaining strong staff teams um, because there is a lot of movement right now. We wanna make sure that whatever role you play in creating culture in your school or your district um, or your teams that, that you guys are equipped with um, with some of the new things that are coming in there. So that's that. Um, and so we hope that you get registered. Um, at the same time, we also launched our new book study series 
and our uh, one of our authors is on the phone or on the call. And so Monica, if you wanna chime in as well, but we've got a, a new um, book study series that we're kind of, the idea is to create a cohort like Emerging Leaders Program. If you're familiar with that, for th that's aimed at new coordinators and it's a year long program um, to kind of help people get uh, their feet under them um, and really dig into some of the goal setting that, that you might do in year one through three. This book study series is really aimed at um, mid-level to experienced coordinators. Um, and even if you're a campus leader, that works too, to dive deeply into some um, planning and implementation of equity, evidence-based equity, um, uh, um, what is the word? Evidence-based equity, Monica, my brain just, well, it's the practices of practices. screening, acceleration, change, and grouping. So yes. if that's something you're working on, this is something I wish I'd had, you know, someone to walk alongside me and kind of coach me through it. So I'm really looking forward to it because I think I'll, I'll learn a lot as well. And it's limited to 25 participants, uh, first come, come, first serve, but it's the idea is that we're creating a real community. You've got some really great brains around this, Monica Simons and Richardson, Marcy Boss, who retired out of um, Bernie, and then Dr. Susan Johnson, who also right. co-authored the and book, so. Oh. When they don't really know the skill set they want, I'm a good fit because I have. <laughs> Rain. Um, so uh, that's the, that's happening. It's a basically a five-part series. It, it starts, we're going to kick off on um, February 22nd. If you haven't made it up your mind at, by then, that's totally fine. That kickoff meeting will be recorded. It's going to be a book walkthrough. So you can watch that later. But the first in-person meeting will happen at Leadership Conference on Sunday afternoon. Um, and the, uh, the final meeting will happen at Gifted Plus Equity um, in June in Denton. So those are the two in person and then they'll meet several times in between there. And you're really gonna come up with a plan, talk about change management, come back, talk about what worked, what didn't work, try again. Um, and so it's really about implementation, uh, which will be awesome. Um, there is a member, non-member fee for that. And it's in addition to leadership conference. So it's just happening at leadership conference. So if you have to make a decision, you can choose to do either or um, none or both. Uh, and so um, that if you have questions, uh, let us know. You can register for both at the same time if you register for leadership conference, just to make it easy on your whole process around POs. Um, and then of course we, uh, and I'll make sure that you guys get a link for that as well. We also have uh, just gonna talk about it until um, I can't stand hearing about, hearing it from myself anymore, but uh, Tempo Plus is our online research-based uh, peer-reviewed resources hub. If you haven't checked it out, I really, really, really encourage you to just go um, to tempo.txgifted.org. Use your uh, member credentials to log in. If you're a member, there's a little button and it should automatically log you in if you use Google and save your passwords. If not, let us know if you need help. But there are so many great um, resources on there, whether it's a PDF checklist that you can download and, and start working on or videos from past conferences. We do um, work with our education committee to select some of those to put up. Um, I know we're going to put up, we, we hosted a, a, a perceptions of, of gifted um, education panel at, um, at uh, Gift Ed, which is fantastic. I know that's going up on February 1st, as soon as um, sessions expire. So um, please, please just take a second to, to dig in there. If they're like, there's nothing for me on here. That's awesome too, because we want to know what kind of resources you need. So shoot me an email, paulina at txgifted.org and tell me, hey, I was looking for this type of um, research or resource and I couldn't find anything. Um, we want to make sure this is a, a really um, user-friendly and uh, supportive site. So I I'll make sure you guys get the link for that as well. Um, any questions? Any, anything we can do for you. Reminder that if you did attend Gift Ed 21 in Dallas or online, you still have access to videos for another 12 days. They expire on the 31st. So go in and make sure you're watching those videos that you wanted um, to catch post-conference and, uh, and uh, down, or not download, but watch those and, and learn from them. So let me know again if I can help in any way. Kelsey, maybe this is the link to the book study. 
awesome. That's leadership conference. Let me put the book study in. Uh, oh, and I didn't even um, tell you the name of the book, but it's implementing evidence-based practices in gifted education. Um, and that's what you will be working on. So here's the information for that. And Monica, thanks so much, Monica Brewer, for giving me the opportunity to speak to all these beautiful people. And I am keeping you all close in my heart. I know it's a, it's a tough year, but um, we're making it together. And it's great to see you guys coming together to make sure you're doing what's best for our kiddos. Anytime, Paulina, anytime we are here to support each other uh, as we do the work to serve our children uh, in gifted education. So I just want to do a few updates for gifted and talented uh, for TA. Uh, and just a few reminders, because I know some of you uh, have heard some of this and some of it is kind of new. So I just wanted to just do a, when I was thinking of the updates, it's just really a general broad, this is what's happening in the state and what has happened. So as you know, we have our state plan. You can download it from the website. It is a flipped version, so it's English and Spanish. Uh, as you know, we rolled it out with six sections. We will be uh, doing some updates to this per the last eight to seven uh, legislative update. So just be aware of that. Uh, why I'm talking about updates, if you are one of those who is a uh, law and rule and policy uh, geek, uh, as you know, the uh, and for those who are not, but just want to keep up with what's happening with the State Board of Education, uh, our rule text is up chapter 89, section A, gifted and talented education is under review. So that is being uh, reviewed by the state board. Uh, actually next week is when they'll first start their uh, look, start the process. Uh, we are not recommending any changes to our rule. Uh, we do pretty much make changes to our state plan, but not to the rule. And when we open the state plan, we will be just removing, uh, our goal is to remove certain sections that have been, that are now back into effect that was repealed with the 86th legislative session. So really just doing some of that cleanup from that session and into 87. So that is, you know, our state plan, our six sections uh, as we go into it. And so, you know, we talked about certification time frame and what we're looking, and it's really not a, so really part of your certifying that you have a program, and that's really what you're doing at this point in time, is that you are, at this point, you've already done your October 31st team snapshot of identifying your students for GT services, and then also your district level identification. Uh, we are coming up on our March, so most of you are either in the midst or getting ready to be in the midst of your kinder um, uh, assessments for identification for your kindergartners, for them to be identified and served by March 1st. And then programming 10 code 21, using that in June. And that final cleanup was, I think, September of this year, knowing how much you are spending in a, actually reporting on how much you are spending on your program services. And so those are, just kind of highlight of what's going on. And then remember, we are identifying and serving and coding uh, our students. And I know that we're doing that every semester, not semester, every six weeks, nine weeks, depending on your coding system uh, as you go into that. And then for our district level codes, I wanted to just remind you what those high level codes are. Uh, as we look at the different options that your district uh, can be providing, and most of you do. And then also remember, uh, as you work with your coordinators, uh, your registrars, and your district teams coordinators, that you can do multiple. There is no just one uh, that you can choose, unless that's the only one that you're doing in your district, but you may choose more than one. And think about those individual small pockets of schools where you have multiple activities going on. So just wanted to take a high level review of that. So on GT funding, and so just a reminder where our funding and our information is on that. Remember, we have a new GT allotment this uh, with the legislative, new legislative session, which everyone should have uh, received their funding, seen it on the summary of finances. Remember, we did cover that a couple of, of GT Tuesdays ago. 
so you have your best allotment still applicable for GT funding. So it is an allocation in the basic allotment that you may still use. And then the resources, uh, we have a to the administrator address. And then your summary of finance reports, those still update constantly as they draw down and put more funds into the system. So those are a couple of options there. So thinking about your funding, remember it is to provide programs for GT students. You must account for the expenditures of your state funds that is part of your program intent code. And then if you fail to implement a program, you are re responsible to refund that allotment. So that allotment does require you to expend it. And it is a 100% expense expenditures of funds. So big question, just another highlight uh, of allowable expenditures for GT. Um, so basically you can use it for your textbooks, instructional materials. Always remember, I always refer people related back to the state plan. You can always be safe if you go back to what the state plan has. Uh, beyond the basic education program. So really thinking beyond going above and beyond what you're doing for all students, but specifically for GT students in your GT program. You can use it for your stipends for GT services, uh, for GT, you know, after school, in school, regular part of, that's outside of their regular activities uh, for your teachers. And then for your GT specialists that serve only GT uh, students in their GT program. So those are, uh, the first set of expenditures that you can think about. And then the second is still your professional development costs for your administrators and teachers. Uh, and then, uh, and I'm sorry, I should, that also includes your counselors, because I know someone might ask that kind of question. Uh, advanced placement courses that is designated as a part of your GT program. And remember, we've been talking about this, designate who is your GT pro, you know, those courses, those teachers, those services, what is that? So everyone will be in the know. And then your GT services, and then you can use it for math counts, problem, a math, pro, future problem solving, uh, Odyssey of the Mind, Academic Decathlon, and some other competitions that long as it is to train and provide GT program services. I see a question, can funds be used for conferences for GT specialists? Uh, yes, because that is a part of their, now if it's a part of their part of your program services, part of your GT, and if this is to build their capacity to provide better services, definitely. So just remember how do you tie it back to what they're doing and their job responsibilities uh, when you look at that. Any other questions on funding before I go into something else? If not, feel free to shoot them to me. Uh, we are, and then as you know, Got a few more GT Tuesdays coming up. We're working on something else also to probably help expound on it, but just wanted to be there. Uh, just wanted to highlight, because you know, while I'm at conference, there's people who do not know who this free resource that is out there, the Texas Performance Standards Project. So remember, we have all of the tasks uh, available for all grade levels. Our grade bands are primary, intermediate and middle school and high school, really looking at uh, you've got a wealth of resources and tools here. Uh, English, some of them are in English and in Spanish, and then uh, 7E model. Uh, we have scoring rubrics for all of them that are both in English and Spanish with student examples, guides to success, and then we have our walkthroughs. What, uh, one thing I want to add uh, with TPSP, we are really looking at uh, this year also. And if you've got the moment and you want to think, we would like to be that district that works with you. We are looking to uh, follow a district or follow a group of kids who are really just starting out with their project from beginning to end. So we can have video vignettes of the entire process and not just that small one at the end. So we're really looking at how can we help show the process. So if you got some kids and if you want to look at, think about, oh, we would like to, for our, to, our program to be highlighted this way, shoot me an email, I am looking. So that is the TPSP. So another thing we're also looking at is uh, broken links review. So if you, as you're working through this and you're like, this is not working, this is not, 
feel free to, if you got a one that uh, a link that is working or a better website or better resource, feel free to shoot that to me. We are constantly looking at those. I have did a massive review of website broken links uh, a couple of weeks ago before the holidays ended so that we can have some cleanup of those. And so what we're also looking at, and let me know how you feel about this, uh, an online course or an online material that will help you facilitate the TPSP. So those are a couple of things and I already talked about the volunteers for new videos. So those are a couple of things I am thinking about. Well, one thing I know I'm doing is we're definitely, we are always correcting broken links, uh, but the online course and then looking for some volunteers. So uh, reach out if you want to participate or got some ideas to share. And then I always wanted to highlight, and as you're thinking, and it's actually is a prime time to think about it. If you're thinking about adding on a course for your uh, high school, or you're actually even your middle schoolers for DT services, uh, the DT interdisciplinary studies mentor seminar is available for you. Uh, really opportune course to look at the entire scope of it to add into your product program as students are working to get that um, that learning experience and that structured process that you will have an educator to serve as their lead and to go through that. And so as you'll see the knowledge and skills that are there. And also, if you're not looking for another course, but you're looking for what are those essential knowledge and skills that we can put into our lesson plans, pull that down from the website uh, and use those. Uh, they come from uh, part of our TEKS and then also part of the College of Career Readiness Standards. So really looking at how can you build into some the more the depth, that complexity, and then build it to another level. So I'm going to add that. Uh, and then we're going into our resources. So hopefully by now everyone has uh, reviewed or checked out the gifted and talented resources. Uh, for our, our DT Equity and Gifted Ed website. It is new, it is uh, refreshed. Uh, it still has a lot of the good components that was in the uh, prior one, just a new format. Uh, and then really looking at said, uh, look at different areas of uh, processes. So question, yes, it can be used for middle school. If you do, you, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, let me stop. The question is, did, did you say that the DTSM uh, can be used for middle school? Yes, it can be used for middle school uh, as an elective and they will still get the high school credit. So yes, you can. And so back to the equity and gifted ed education. I'm gonna try not to squirrel on you again. Uh, really thinking of uh, looking at that, you still have your uh, emerging bilingual information. You're twice exceptional. Uh, and then we're looking at it more from a whole student uh, and looking at the whole process of how we do and provide that equitable access for our students. Just a highlight of our professional development opportunities that are available through our ESCs. Uh, all of our 30 hour trainings are there. Our administrator and our separate counselor training is available. Our six hour updates, some of these are our older ones. And then they are still having a school board opportunity of training uh, with that they have at the ESC level. And these are our most recent professional development uh, courses out there. Uh, the depth and complexity for the secondary uh, learner, that is our most recent. And then before that, attending to the effect, our social and emotional learning. Uh, all of our ESCs have this. Uh, if you're looking for something on the language, learners are economically disadvantaged or our, ES, our English learners. We got something for you. We really try to make, uh, try to provide you with some opportunities. Uh, and if you have some, um, what we're looking for now is our next one. We're looking at equity. And then we're also looking at secondary, getting more into the content. Uh, all of these courses that are provided uh, through our ESCs are six hour courses. Uh, we have the one hour. So they are all six hours uh, for you to take. If there is any uh, tr training opportunities or PD that you're looking for that you like, can we develop this? Uh, please put that in the chat. Uh, we'll try to see if we can 
how our budget will align and be able to do that. And then the final piece with this one is also uh, our six hour update training. These are things for you to consider when you're approving our uh, training uh, outside of your norm. So really thinking, is it prepared, you know, to meet the needs of GT students, provide them with the content, uh, is specifically looking at what's going on in your uh, district, looking at the nature and needs of GT students, and then that person is the expert in gifted education, or you know, really looking at they're in the expert content area. So really thinking uh, specifically as we're going into this. Oh, PE and fine arts. Okay, we'll think about it. we'll we'll see how we can do PE and fine arts. Fine arts, I I, I think I can figure out fine arts a little bit better than P, but possibly we can work it out. I have to go, I have to, go to my note well. Uh, so perennial math is having a math tournament for Texas and sorry for the short notice, but this is happening this month. Uh, at the end of the month, registration is still open for, I think till the end of this week. Uh, I will, I think I can do it, drop into the chat. The link, I think I can get uh, the resource information, and then I'll also put it out there for you. Um, there we go. Hopefully it will work. I'll, I'm dropping it in the chat, and then I will also put it on the website for you to get more information if you want to. Uh, consider this for your students, and it might be if it's too late for right now, uh, later on in the year, or for next year with their tournament and they're actually having a parent component. So hopefully, that, oh, just remind me. Right. And that is loaded. Um, for those who are looking for something to support uh, or looking for some tools, uh, we do have our GT program implementation resource out there for you. Uh, it does have uh, sample documents that you can pull, download, rename, retitle for your district um, and to be appropriate. So if you're looking for some uh, resources there, that is a prime uh, tool for you. Uh, and then we have our GT Tuesday, just the links. Uh, we have some topics coming up. And then if you want to remember, I am still looking for people to want who I want to share and provide some more information on how what you're doing in your district. So I think everyone wants to hear how you're doing it and then what can they can do also. And uh, our GT Tuesdays can be found here here on our gifted and talented education resources page, uh, our marketing uh, and communications division updated our page. I think it looks nice. So you will find all of the links there. I think I have updated everything to date. Yeah, because the last one was in November. It's been a moment since we've been together. Um, but everything is there for you uh, to review, to share, to see. And then finally, uh, I'm not going to cover all of these, but here's a quick link for all of the resources that are on our webpage that you may want to uh, review, uh, check out, and use. Uh, I am preparing a newsletter. So if you got any topics that you want to share with the world or uh, put out what's going on in your district, shoot it to me this week because I'm about to get it out. Um, and then so. In your, uh, this is how you subscribe, subscribe to our web page, uh, to our newsletter as we go into that. All right, I am open for any other questions, wonderings. Uh, any questions? Monica, when you mentioned, this is Crystal Forbin, when you mentioned hi, the, hi the um funding to be used for um ap does that have to be gt specific ap courses or just the district can say oh we offer ap and so that's what we're using the gt funding for so for 
your for using your GT allotment for AP, it has to be designated in GT, part of your GT services. So it just can't. So there's, I know a lot of districts have, these are our advanced courses, but there is a difference between your advanced courses and these are our, part of our advanced courses that are part of our GT services. Because there's a lot of advanced courses that you have no say on what those GT services look like in those courses. You should have a say in, they should be differentiating their instruction, they should be doing this. So it, it really needs to be that line of, these are either your, you should have a list of, these are our defined so that you know these are our teachers. Because I can just think, well, it's going back to our fine arts conversation. Um, some of them have advanced courses that are not a part of your process. So really thinking of those courses. Did they help? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> but I'll, I'll kind of figure it out. Maybe I'll call you later. Crystal, if the AP course is specifically for GT students, or if that's how you've designated your services, then it's, then you can use the funds on AP, but it has to be directly related to providing programs for gifted and talented students. Well, the reason I asked that question is because it's kind of like secondary. We offer uh, students courses in advanced placement, but what does that mean? Mm -hmm. And I was just wondering if it had to be GT specific advanced placement courses. <clears throat> All of our AP teachers have to have the training in the six hours. As I said, I'm just, I was just looking, I don't want to block up the questioning, but I know that that's a thing for secondary and in some districts, you know, that'll be the catch all for the use of those funds is we offer AP for GT kids and, so, and therefore. That's it. Uh, and I think that's the, 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 the honest right there, Crystal, is how, how does your district define it? And right now it does not sound, it sounds like it is open and wide to all AP courses or IB courses. I, I can't remember if y'all have IB. So it's really like, okay, all of our AP courses are in that opportunity or I will take it back. Let me take that back. Definitely your four core, because I can't say, you know, some of the others like your computer science, some of them may, may not see that's the thing. But definitely your four core, because that's where whoever defined it years ago, that's where they defined it. Uh, our advanced, advanced placement courses are going to be part of our GT services. Now realizing advanced placement is going wider and, and farther than what we expected a long time ago. So really, there probably needs to be another step into let's redefine what our AP courses are and what those responsibilities are for those teachers. Okay, that, that answers my question. Yeah, okay. Any other questions? Wondering, we got a few minutes. If not, I'm gonna give you time back. Or if another district wants to say how they're doing it, I see a few put it in there in the chat, so. One forty-four on my clock. Let's turn to one forty-five. Here is my contact information. If you ever have questions, you need to reach me. Drop me a call, uh, or shoot me an email. I try to be real well on responding in a timely manner. But if not, email me back or call me. So, one forty-five. Give you fifteen minutes to do something. Maybe grab lunch if there are no other questions. Thank you, everyone. Oh, I do want to say, because I know y'all are following my world. Uh, Titans, go Titans, go Titans, go Titans. They are the division uh, champions for the AFC South. Uh, so they're playing next year, next week to see if they move to the next one. You know, my youngest nephew is there uh, playing. So good luck, everyone. Have, everyone have a great week.
uh, great risk uh, to our next meeting, which will be March, yes, January. I'm sorry, my life is crazy right now. February, February the 5th, I wanna say. No, actually it's February 1st, because the month comes in on a, yeah. February 1st is our next meeting at 9, 8 a.m. February 1st, 9 a.m., I will see you then. So thank you everyone. Have a great day.